This video was sponsored by LastPass. LastPass is a password manager that generates unique high security passwords for all of your accounts across the internet. LastPass remembers all of these passwords so you don't need to worry about getting locked out of accounts or remembering which password goes with which website. With LastPass you can be sure that all of your accounts have strong unique passwords. So if, for example, a social media website is compromised, the hackers will have no chance of using that social media leak to also crack the password to your online banking. Passwords are heavily encrypted and stored locally on your devices, so only you have access. Click the link in the video description below to learn more and give LastPass a try. Hi everyone, in this video I'll be taking one of these inexpensive off-brand action cameras. I got this for maybe 30 or $35 online, and I'll be converting this to use interchangeable C-mount lenses. Now the reason that I'd like to do this project for myself is because as I've been filming my videos over the last few weeks, I've been thinking that it would be interesting if I had a camera filming somewhere <laughs> uh, that is capable of doing time-lapse footage. Now I don't want to use one of my primary cameras like the GH4 that I'm filming myself on now for this purpose. In doing so, I'd be handicapping myself. I wouldn't have those good cameras to use for the other shots in the video. I want something that's inexpensive like these little action cams. Now I don't want to use these as is because they're equipped with, as I'm sure you're aware, a wide angle lens. You'll recognize the wide angle footage from an action cam from all the GoPro shots that have been around for years. By equipping this camera with C-mount lenses, I'll have a lot of other options for lenses with longer focal lengths so I can get narrow field of view, maybe even some macro photography. Now I know a number of you might be saying that there already is a commercially made option for a C-mount conversion kit for some of the larger name brands like GoPro, but after paying for the kit and the name brand camera, you're talking about a setup that costs nearly $1,000. This conversion plus the camera should cost only about a total of $40. So for my purposes, I think this is a perfect solution. All right, well before I get into this project, I think I'll give a brief overview as to what I'll be doing. Uh, the first step will be to disassemble, partially at least, this action cam, just so I can expose this lens and then remove it. At that point, I'll be replacing it, and I gotta figure out some way to mount this inside. This little piece of camera equipment is a C-mount extension tube. This would be used with a regular native C-mount camera to move the lens further away from the sensor. Doing that turns the lens into more of a macro lens, but in this case, I'm not going to be using this for a macro function, but it's just a convenient mount that has the proper size threads to attach these lenses. So I'll be using this as my lens mount in place of the stock lens on this camera. And with that, I guess we can jump right into this project, so let's begin. The first step to this project will be to remove the front cover on this camera. And these little action cams are primarily held together with plastic snaps that connect with uh, connectors on the inside of the housing. And in order to remove this front cover, we just need something sharp that we can force into the seam between these two pieces. Now you could use a knife for this. The best tool to have is one of these. This is a little plastic pry tool that is used for cell phone repair. It's used to take the cover off of cell phones and that will also work well for this camera. To open up this case, I simply force my prying tool in between the seam and I'll slowly work this around the border until the case pops free. Well, that was quite easy. The next step is to remove this shroud that surrounds the lens. And I've watched a few disassembly videos of name brand cameras that have this same shroud. And in those name brand cameras, it's attached from behind with screws, which makes it very difficult to remove. But in these off-brand cameras, fortunately, it seems they're just held on with snaps, the same as the front case. So I should be able to remove it with the same tool. And now we can finally get a good look at the lens in its entirety. You can see at the base of the lens are threads, and these are used to adjust the focus of the lens in the factory. And once the focus is properly adjusted, it's glued in place at the base of those threads. So this is where you hope whoever was assembling cameras in the factory the day yours was made went very conservative on the glue, because that will make it much easier to remove this lens in one piece. 
Well, the lens actually came out surprisingly easy. You can see the threads down there above the sensor that it was glued into. So now with that lens out, the sensor is completely exposed. I don't know if I like that while I continue work on this project. I'll just cover the opening to the sensor with a piece of masking tape to protect it from dust. Here you can see one of my test cameras that I purchased in preparation for this project, which I completely disassembled all the way down to the circuitry, just so I could see how this camera was put together. You can see that I've removed pretty much all of the plastic housing surrounding the sensor in a roughly circular area in this camera. And while it may look messy, I've done this for a very particular purpose and in a specific shape so that my C-mount extension tube will fit cleanly in this opening. Now before working on making this opening in the new camera over here, it's very important to inspect all around where the sensor is to make sure that there's no wires or circuitry that will be contacted or damaged as we carve through this plastic housing. If there is a wire sticking up, such as the Wi-Fi wire in these cameras, just be sure to push it down and out of the way. And make sure the battery is not installed during this process either. The method that I chose to carve an opening in this camera is by heating a small section of copper pipe and using it to melt through the plastic. You could use any number of small cutting tools for this, like a Dremel. Just work slowly and very carefully until you have an opening large enough to fit the C-mount adapter. All right, well, I'm now finished carving away the external casing so that my C-mount extension tube fits right inside and it's just about flush with the top face of the camera. I want this extension tube as deep as I can possibly get it into the camera before screwing a lens in would actually hit the threaded portion that is above the sensor. I, I don't want the back of the lens to be contacting that. It's easy to move lenses further away from the sensor if necessary by adding spacers or even a secondary extension tube. But once the mount is permanently installed, it's impossible to get the lenses any closer to the sensor. Now, one downside you should be aware of of this modification is if I insert a battery into my test camera over here, you'll notice that the battery interferes with where the lens mount will be placed. So that means we can no longer use internal batteries in these cameras. But for my purposes, that's fine. I wouldn't use the internal batteries anyway because for time lapse, these just don't have enough capacity. So you can power these cameras instead through the USB port on the side, and that can be done with either an external battery pack or even a wall outlet. And using a cell phone adapter and USB cable, you can run these cameras indefinitely. Since I now have the lens mount in the position I'd like it to be, I can now mix up a little bit of epoxy and we'll use this to permanently hold it in place. This is a very permanent solution, so you wanna be quite sure that this new lens mount is flush with the surface of the sensor before the epoxy sets. Well, I've let my epoxy set for the last 12 hours, and this camera is actually ready to use at this point. I could further improve at least the cosmetics by reinstalling the front case, which would have to be cut away to make room for the new C-mount adapter, but I think I won't bother at this point, at least not yet. I can test the camera as it is and see just how well it performs. I'll just remove the small piece of masking tape covering the sensor, and now I can install a lens. This one in particular is an 8mm f1.3 C-mount lens. The first test I'll do with this new camera is to see what the footage looks like as compared to my current A-cam, which is this GH4 that I'm filming myself on now. Now, when I switch over to this, keep in mind that the GH4 retailed, I think, for $1,200 when it was first released, whereas this new camera is $35 right now on eBay. So it's not really a fair comparison between the two, but it'll just give you a little perspective. All right, so let me switch over to the new camera 
And what do you think of this? This is an 8.5 millimeter lens on this camera compared to a 25 millimeter lens on my GH4. Because of the difference in sensor sizes, it's roughly the, an equivalent field of view between the two cameras. The action cam has a much smaller sensor than my GH4. So I think this turned out really well and there's a lot of other cool things we can do with this camera now that it's modified. So I've now moved outside and I've replaced the lens on this camera with a C-mount cinema lens that I have. This is a 25 millimeter cinema lens. When I switch to the footage from this camera, you'll notice that it looks very strange. It looks kind of washed out and all the colors are wrong. Now, the reason for this is because when I removed the stock lens in this camera, you might have noticed on the back that there was a piece of glass. This is an infrared filter. Without this filter behind the lens, there's nothing to stop infrared light from being detected by the sensor, instead of just the visible color spectrum that we're used to seeing. Fortunately, you can buy an external infrared filter that's meant to go on the front of your lenses, and if you buy one large filter, you can just use step-down rings to fit all of your various size lenses. You can see how quickly the colors are corrected when I move this filter in front of the camera. Now, arguably the more interesting thing you can do now that this camera no longer has a pre-installed IR filter behind the lens is instead of blocking out the infrared light, you can instead block all of the visible spectrum leaving only the infrared. And you do this with an ND filter, which is like sunglasses for your lens. When I installed this in front of my lens, all we're left with is infrared light, which turns the image into a very ghostly color. Let's do a quick comparison of what this camera image looks like in normal visible light as compared to infrared. One of the more interesting things about filming in infrared is that some materials appear transparent to infrared light that are not transparent to visible light, like my sunglasses here. You can see that they look perfectly clear through the eyes of my infrared camera while being relatively dim through the eyes of my regular light camera. This shows why you couldn't use sunglasses when looking at the solar eclipse last month. Your sunglasses are most probably completely transparent to infrared light, and staring directly at the sun would be giving your eyes quite a heavy dose. Not great. All right, everyone. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you'd like to try this project for yourself, I'll put links in the video description below to where you can find cameras like the one that I modified in this video. Let me know if you try this in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you really enjoyed this video, please consider supporting my channel on Patreon. It would mean a lot to have your support there to be able to afford continuing to make videos like this without having to worry about advertising rates on YouTube and sponsors and things like that. So thank you for watching this video. Leave me comments below. I still read them all. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.